All right. Um, well, normally we go ahead and wait for just a second while we let people join in. But uh, anyway, we just hit 10,000 subscribers. Huge shout out to you guys for uh, getting us to this point. Uh, that's just so cool. I honestly didn't... Six months ago when I started the channel, I honestly didn't expect getting to this point of 10,000 subscribers. I just... I really just, I can't say thank you guys to you guys, the supporters, the subscribers, the viewers, as much as possible. We would not be here without you guys. So, today we just got done raw feeding. Uh, raw prepping. Raw, raw prepping for <laughs> raw feeding. So, we went ahead. We Hi guys. This is 70? Um, 35 days worth. So, 70 separated out bags of food. So, we have not quite... Not quite 35 days. I messed that up. A little over a month, yeah. So we have 73. We have Thank you, about Justine. 22, 23 days of feeding here. Yeah, that's a lot of food. <laughs> so almost almost a whole month of, uh, of food prep. And, you know, of course, we still have just a little bit extra that, uh, that we didn't use quite yet. But it just fell like on the right day of the week where we were going to be running out of this stuff this week. So we thought we might as well prep this and have it ready going into the week. Anyway. Um, Wait, do you want to tell them what we prepped? Yes. Okay. So we have a couple different um, styles here. We've got a couple different protein sources. So all of these bags are going to go ahead and get a raw egg thrown in on top of them. But like, so this one here, you've got a chicken foot, you've got some strawberries, some carrots, and then a chicken thigh. And all of these are just shy of a pound, just barely shy of a pound. So um, this one, you've got chicken breast, you've got a little bit of uh, ground beef in there. This one, you've got like a chicken drum, chicken leg, and then, you know, some chicken breast. This one's beef and chicken foot. Uh, you've got one like right here. You've got chicken thigh, and then you've got some beef in there. So really, we're just uh, we're throwing in and experimenting with new things. Um, we're always doing new things. We're doing turkey breast. We're doing turkey. We're doing duck neck, um, duck gizzards, things like that. Uh, what we haven't done in any of these is chicken liver. So what we're going to have to go ahead and do is we'll just have some that's already really prepped, ready to go for the week. And then we'll just go ahead and add in a little bit to each one so they do get that 10% of organs that they do need. But uh, for today's video, I'll just go ahead and show you guys what it looks like when we do this. So this one has some carrots in it, some chicken liver, a chicken drum as well. So, so these are our older ones. And for summer, Colin was saying that we are feeding a little bit more. Why? Yes. So in the winter, where the dogs aren't outside, aren't exercising, aren't playing, we do cut back their uh, meal plan just a little bit. If you don't, they'll start to get really, really heavy set in the winter because you should be changing their their diet up according to what their exercise plan is. So like, if you're going really heavy at the gym, like so, say you and I, uh, as humans, we're going to the gym and we're focusing on a certain thing. We want to get bulky. We want to cut. You change your meal plan for that. So with the weather warming up, we had like some warm weather, not this last week, but we have some weather telling us that we're gonna have some warm weather. So we had a cold front come through with a couple snowstorms, and then the last, what, two days? Two days? Yeah, it's warmed up. Day, it's been warming up. So we're above freezing. Um, you know, if you're returning to the channel, you know us, like 35, 40 degrees is warm enough to call it warm. Um, I know that's not really warm, and technically it's still kind of like really, really cold. But for us in Utah, that's warm. And if if, if, it, <laughs> if it's warm enough to melt some snow, it's warm enough for me to consider it warm. So their diet for the winter, they do get a little bit of extra kibble. Um, so we're actually going to switch it up. We are going to double their raw food and we are going to cut back just a little bit on their kibble. We'll see how they react to it. We'll see with them getting out. So we're going to be doing a lot of camping. We'll be doing a lot of hiking. We'll be doing a lot of swimming. And the dogs need the best diet and the best proper meal and protein and health that they can possibly get. We are very, very active in the summer. Very active. They are spoiled. <laughs> they are a little spoiled. Somebody say that? Yeah. So here you've got a little bit of broccoli, some chicken liver. You can see the chicken liver down there in the bottom. See the chicken liver, chicken drum, a little bit of chicken breast, some carrots, some broccoli. 
And honestly, to raw feed, it's not that expensive. It's not. I mean, if... Okay, so this is for three dogs. Um, also, should I show them what we got for the dogs as a special present for eating tinder? Oh, yeah. We got the dogs a gift, actually. We did. This actually came from you guys, the viewers. We saw this comment quite a bit. So we decided to go ahead and drop a little bit of money on a big old steak for them. So we're going to chop this up, three different pieces. We're going to weigh it out all evenly. Put your hand up to and that. And we're going to drop it. Like, it's it. huge. There's about <laughs> four and a half pounds of beef here. So uh, so each dog's going to get quite a bit of steak there. And that's no cheap thing. Like, if you're feeding a dog like that, you might you might go a little broke real quick. But if you're getting, like, chicken thighs, chicken drums, um, like... The, the ground beef is the probably the most expensive part of the raw feeding, uh, but when you're raw feeding beef, it's not you don't have to do as much beef as you would like a chicken uh, chicken breast. It's not as high in that protein. So anyway, this is kind of what their uh, their meals look like at prep. So really, I mean that's as far as it goes for like you know the main the part that you have to prep. And then we do go ahead, we have a couple additives over here. So you guys, if you're returning to the channel again, you know that we love this Zesty Paws Wild Alaskan Salmon Oil. Tons and tons of comments. Okay, somebody asked if we feed bone in. Bone in, yes. Very, very important that you listen right now to what I say. If you have bones, you've got to go 100% raw. You can't, we don't do fish bones, and we don't do any types of bones except for birds. So we've got the chicken feet, and we've got the chicken bone in legs, we've got the thighs, the drums, um, wings, whatever you want there. Now, depending on how old your Rottweiler is, or how young or small your Rottweiler is, you're going to want to cut down their portions accordingly. Now we do plan to get a puppy soon. I know this is probably not going to be this summer, because Sam and I will have <laughs> one more summer before we tie ourselves down with a puppy again. But we are going to be having a puppy. If you have a puppy right now, I know that's not going to help you guys because those things are going to grow like freaking weeds. But we plan, when we started this channel, our main goal in mind was how can we help the most people possible. So now if we get a puppy and we go through the full process steps, it's hard for me to go back and like show you guys what puppy training looks like when I've got three dogs who are very highly trained and sociable like it's it's really hard for me to go show you what it looks like from the beginning of the day or from the beginning of their lives so we're just going to go ahead and do that for you guys so if that is something that makes you happy don't forget to smash the like button on this video right now let us know in the comments what you guys are excited for seeing the puppy come to the channel but as of right now this is a adult meal prep um People will ask a question all the time, well, how early can I start my Rottweiler? I've seen people start them as early as eight weeks. Um, we don't ever start anything before 12 weeks, and we don't do anything completely 100% raw before six months. So I hope that answers any questions. Do you have any other questions before I go? Um, when will you have a live chat on structure and discipline? Um, that's a good question. They eat better than me. Hello. Yeah, okay. How many questions do you guys, how many live chats do you guys want to see? What, we've had some do really, really well. We've had some not do so well. What do you guys want to see in live chats? How often do you want to see them? Um, and, and it's what we're currently doing, posting a couple videos here and there. Is that good for you guys? Like, we spend a lot of time editing them. Would you like, just let us know what you guys would like to see coming up on the channel. So with that being said, let's go ahead and we're going to add in this Zesty Paws Wild Alaskan Salmon Oil. A lot of people always are, are always mentioning about how shiny and healthy our dog's coats are. So this is one thing that really helps with that. It's got all the omega-3, all the omega-6 oils, and fish oil is great for their skin and coat. It gives it that oily texture without having the oily, greasy fur. Um, but also, you're not dried out. So we're going to do two pumps of this. Emu oil? I've never even heard of that. What is it? Emu oil? Never heard of that either. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shove these in there. So these are their hip and joint pills. So we do add these in. Uh, we did just run out of our run out. We did just run out of our turmeric pills. So now we're just going to go ahead. We're going to try this brand out. And I mean, really, it's a great deal. I'll put the link down in the description for you guys. Um, if you guys would like to see where to get these, I'll put the link down for this uh, Alaskan salmon oil as well as the turmeric pills. 
We're gonna go ahead. We're gonna just push one of those in. The dogs don't really have a problem with these. They're they're kind of like softer and chewier. Um, the the harder like powder pills. Yeah, turmeric pills. Mama would do anything she yeah. could to avoid it. <laughs> she, she, would not, she would spit it out. She would not be a fan of those. So. Okay. Yeah, um. Somebody gonna... else asked. Um. Hold on. Wait one second. Sorry. Go ahead. Trying to keep up. We are going to add in one quail egg to each of their bowls. Those quail eggs are so pretty. They're so cute. They are. We're getting low on those. All right, so we got the quail eggs, and then the final thing that we're gonna do to top it all off, we are gonna add in some raw eggs. Some what? Some raw eggs. Somebody says, I have a six month, a puppy that's six months. Should I do 100% raw? He eats kibble for, kibble for breakfast. Uh, we do kibble in the morning and then we do raw food at night. So, I mean, if you want to go 100% raw food with three Rottweilers, that's a little bit bigger of a commitment. Like, this is lasting 21 days being one time a day. If we were to do this twice a day, it would cut it down to like 10 days. So, with one dog, I mean, this is going to last two months. With three dogs, it lasts us 20 days. So, 23 days, something like that. So, uh, if you can afford it and you are willing to take that commitment, go to a raw food diet. But I'm telling you, your dog's never going to want to go back. So, if you're going to switch now, you better be willing to stay now. Oh, check out this super fire beanie right here, super fire snapback right here. This is Junior, our, old, our oldest Rottweiler. This is his paw. On the back, we do have embroidered across the top there, uh, the Ronnie channel. So if you guys haven't seen the new merchandise, check it out. We've got this hat, we've got a couple beanies, we got shirts on the way, we got sweaters on the way, we got lanyards on the way, we got drink koozies on the way, we got all your needs coming. So don't forget to uh, check out our merchandise line if you guys are interested in any of that. Um, raw food for a pit bull? Raw food for a pit bull, yes. Dogs are omnivores. There's a lot of people that are going to say that they're specifically carnivores. They need meat, no vegetables, all that other stuff. I just, I simply don't believe it. If I'm, I'm telling you right now that if my dogs have an upset stomach, they're going to go out in the backyard and they're going to eat a little bit of grass. And it's going to, it's going to kind of, uh, kind of balance their stomach out a little bit. Now, people will say, oh, my dog just gets meat. They just need protein. They're just carnivores. That's true to an extent. The wolf is the top of the line in the animal kingdom. They eat vegetables and meat, so my dogs will continue to eat vegetables and meat. You can do the same for your pit bull. I think you would benefit from it. So, yes, we do feed raw eggs. Um, we just answered about the bones, only bird bones. Make sure they're raw. Do not cook. No fish bones. Um, where do you find the merch? Where do you find the merch? So, uh, you can get a hold of us on Instagram, at the Roddy Channel. You can get a hold of us on Facebook at the Roddy Channel, or you can get a hold of us at the Roddy Channel at gmail.com. You can contact us any of those three ways to get your hands on some merch. We are working on an online store, but for right now, where we're just buying and stocking them in, uh, in, in our office, like we have a little setup in the office of all this stuff ready to go. We shipped out four orders on Friday. We had four orders the first night that we dropped merch, um, three orders the next day, uh, shipping out a couple more tomorrow. So if you're interested in getting any, you can comment on any of those three platforms. You can send us a personal message on any of those and we'll respond to you. We'll get a payment from you, we'll get your shipping address, and we'll ship them out. Uh, we're shipping anywhere in the United States for $8 right now. So Raw eggs, just crack them up. Shells are high in calcium. Now, some people's dogs might not eat the shells just like this. Uh, who is it that doesn't like the shells? Kita? Yeah, Kita avoids the shells, too. Kita avoids the shells unless they're, like, all mixed around in some other stuff. Um, where did my rag go? Um, I put it away. You can get a new one if you want. So, we, uh, yeah, some people's dogs will really like them. Some, like, you can throw a raw egg at Kenai. He'll catch it, drop it, let it break. He'll eat the whole thing off the ground. Fluffy, he's too gentle. You know, he won't break it. Like, you throw it at him, you can't put it in his mouth, he'll, like, set it down on the ground, like, roll it around. When it eventually breaks, he'll eat it. Kita stays away from the, the eggshells 
if they're like just plain like that sitting on top of everything. If we stir everything up, then she's a little bit better at eating those, but they are really high in calcium. So if your dog doesn't eat them like this, you can um, save all of them from like a carton, uh, carton, cart, whatever, carton of eggs. You can save them all. You can throw them all on a uh, baking sheet. You can bake them in the oven, and then you can throw them in a blender, and you can blend them up into a powder, and you can add the powder into water, food, anything like that. So we don't ship out raw food. It's super easy to do. We don't ship out raw food, but we do have a video on how to prep. You can find a couple videos on our channel. So be sure to visit the channel and check out those. A lot of them have raw food diet in the title or in the thumbnail, so it should be pretty easy to find for you. Right? They're talking about Junior. Junior. The video and how they wish they could have seen him. Oh, man. I, I, I just... Words, even even pictures and videos, do not do any justice. So right now I'm just gonna go. You should ahead. leave these whole because the dogs won't break those either. Just wait. Some do, some don't. So I'm just mixing everything up right now so that uh, everything's you know just flavor infused as possible. So like Kita's not a huge fan of the vegetables, but if if they're covered in you know raw beef and chicken liver, then she'll eat them. These are quail eggs. Yep, these little ones. They are quail eggs. So then we just kind of mix everything up like that so that every, all the veggies have all the meat infused flavor on them. Just like that. Um, what is the best dry kibble for Roddy's? Um, best dry kibble depends on what stage you're doing. Um, so a lot of adult, high end adult dogs will use what you guys have heard as Royal Canine. Um, we use Purina One Smart Blend here in this house. Now, really there's there's a few that you can get that are going to be great um, make sure they're not loaded with with crappy fillers like you might be paying 25 dollars for a bag of food versus 50 dollars for a bag of food that maybe is 10 pounds less but if your dog eats half the amount of food are you really paying as much out the door so you really just need to do your research on which kibble is filled with just chicken byproduct uh, processed just junk like Imagine if somebody just gave you like a processed box dinner all the time and said, here, eat this. Like, the dogs are getting hungry. Yeah. It's getting a little bit. It's like an hour past our, our feeding They time. can hear us. <laughs> they know what's coming. Um, but uh, what was I saying? Um, oh, just, just do your research. Make, I mean, you know, check out multiple different brands. Don't just, don't just listen to me and say that one brand is going to be right for you or not. Royal Canine's really good. Um, I've heard that, uh, uh, what's that one? Purina Smart Blend, and then we've got one more. that I've, I've heard to stay away from lambs. I don't really know too much of that. We have experience with it a little bit. Um, when we did, our dogs got really gassy, but uh, I can't think of that other, that other brand of uh, dog food. It's, it's a grain-free food. So when they're puppies, we use the large breed formula, and then uh, we use the Purina One Healthy Weight Diet for them when they're older. So now that Fluffy's past that two-year mark, we're going to all healthy diet, or healthy weight, and then raw food. Um, is it okay to mix dry and raw? Um, mixing them together, like you wouldn't want to put your kibble in with this. You would not want to mix it in. And the reason why is because this raw food is going gonna, is gonna to digest faster than the kibble. So if their stomach is digesting half of the food in it, then it's not going to go necessarily as well as if you're feeding, say, kibble in the morning, they're active all day, raw food at night, they're sleeping on it. The reason why we do raw food at night is because we, Sam and I, work morning to afternoon. We sleep from what 10 11 to 5 6 in the morning yeah so we sleep in at night we feed our dogs about six or seven they can run around a little bit use the bathroom by the time that they're laying down this stuff is already being digested and processed in their stomach or uh digested through that process in their stomach and the raw food's not as hard on their stomach as the dry food so we like to do that while they're sleeping because it's easier for them have any more questions um nope no Nope. Okay, so now that I've got these all, uh, I've got these all, all stirred up and flavor infused, should we go ahead and let the dogs in and uh, yeah. get them fed up, and then we'll go ahead and put all the raw food stuff away. Okay, I will be right back. Okay. Everything's off the floor that we need. Yep. Drink real quick. <laughs> Why are you wet? <laughs> I don't know. 
don't even know. <laughs> I don't know how to pull this stuff off. Okay, um, what do you guys think? You guys know where to go to wait for your food? What is that? <laughs> you guys are hiding. You guys are hiding. Uh, uh. Alright, come on. Out of the kitchen. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Stay. Nope. We haven't been feeding them down here. Out. Stay. We've been feeding them upstairs, so this is new. We feed all in one place, yes. They are trained to stay, to wait until dad says. Yes. Oh, there she goes. Oh, she gone. That's a lot of food for them. It is a lot of food. Y'all deserve it, 10K. Fluffy boy. Ouch. Senor, what you doing? You want this? Yeah, you wanna keep it. Did you read books or did experience help you? Who, from this? How about trial training? And, trial and error. Um, I do read books, but not necessarily many on dogs. I do I do a lot of research. Um, I I pay very heavy attention to the dogs, the way that they're reacting um, when they when they go to the bathroom outside. Where are you going? I pay attention to how their poop looks. Is it runny? Is it solid? Is it yellow? Is you know. Um, I, I pay a lot of attention to the dogs. These guys are the most important things in my life. They eat better than us. <laughs> like, like they legit eat better than us. They're they're eating a steak tomorrow. Uh, I don't know if we'll do it tomorrow or what. But anyway, if you guys that's not yours. See, hey, hey Fluff, that's not yours. Fluff, Fluff, come here. Come here. Come here. That's not your food. Wait till I'm done. Hey. Okay. They're done now, they'll lick each other. Yeah, they go, they go to each other's bowls. Mama's been eating real slow. Yeah, yeah, she has. Which is weird. She's typically not a slow eater. But she's picky, so she's probably digging through it all. She is a picky eater. Cluff, how are you doing? How's that dinner? How's that dinner? How's that? No? Hey, Cluff. We haven't been home for a minute, so they're happy to see us. How's it doing? Um, That's not anyway, yours. Yeah, you just, I mean, it's, it's there's a science to it. it it's definitely, you see, you've got people who do nutrition and prep plan for humans. That same thing needs to happen for dogs. You've got to make sure you've got the veggies you need. you got to make sure that you've got the meat, the protein sources that you need. you got to make sure you get the bones that you need. Hold on, Kita, hey. Kita left see, look, her, uh, you have her eggshells. <laughs> hey, Puff. Puff. Come here. No, 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 no. So right here, Fluffy did not stop eating as soon as I started petting him. So what I'm doing is I have my arm around here, right on this right side. Now Rottweilers are very leader, um, leader based. So I'm letting him know right now that it's not okay to be eating and he needs to stop while I'm petting him. Okay, get it. Good boy. So, I mean, it, it even, Fluffy is a puppy still. Even being trained as well as he is, there's still times where they put they try and push your limits a little bit. And you have to remind them, hey, no. You listen to what I say. I'm the leader. I'll let you know when it's okay to eat. Um, the best one out of all of them is Kita. Kita does not eat a little bit. Even chew on a bone if you're petting them. So that's something that we teach our dogs. They don't eat while we're petting them. And the reason why we teach them that is because... If they're eating and somebody comes up and starts petting them, we don't ever want our dogs to flip around and snap on them, bite them. We want to just set our dogs up for success as much as possible. So, anyway, but, uh, yeah, long story short is it's a science. And it's going to take a while for you to get it down just to a T. You might overfeed them just a little bit. You might underfeed them just a little bit. Listen to what they're telling you, and, and you'll know. You'll know. Fluffy is two years old. He just barely turned two, so. Two. Fluffy is two, and he's a big boy. He weighs the same as me. 
And then Mama Kita, she's four. Kenai is six. He's the oldest, and he has the tail. So Fluffy is Mama's son. Yep. Yeah, so four, two, and six. And all of their birthdays are in January. So anyway, yeah. What else? What else do we gotta go? Over? Um. Do we have any? Do we have any viewers? Yeah, we have 57 Anybody right now. Watching us? If you're watching, don't forget to smash that like button. You can even hit it twice. Just make sure that you leave it on like. You hit it like one, two, three. That would technically be two likes. Yeah, we both had plenty of pets before. Um, coming home from a day's work to see how happy the dogs get. That's the first time they've seen us. We've been gone for about five hours, I think. Wait, what time did we leave? Yeah, we left the house around two. And it's eight. So this is the first time they've seen us for a minute. Um, first time you didn't miss live chat. Welcome. Why does one have a long tail and why did the others get cut? So uh, Kida and Kenai were, or Kida and Fluffy were my choice to cut. Kenai, we rescued him as a puppy and his, uh, Kenai. his, breeder, Kenai. Kenai. his breeders don't believe in tail docking. So he, that's why he still has the long tail. Fluffy, we cropped his tail at three days old, and Kita, her tail was cropped at two days old. Two days. Fluffy is licking something on the... That might be where we were prepping the chicken or something. Kenai. I don't know. Kenai, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? How is Lexi doing? She's doing so well. I told them we went and saw her. We went and saw her. We just got back from seeing her. We do have a video coming out on her soon. We can't surprise anybody with anything anymore. We're horrible at secrets. We're not, we're not BS. Hey, even Christmas, I have like buy something like a month before, and I'm like, do you want to see what I got you? <laughs> yeah. Horrible at it. What's up, Fluff? What's up? How was dinner? How was dinner? How was dinner? You guys want to see what we got you? Oh, yeah. For 10K. Look what we got you to celebrate 10K. Three different sizes of steak. Are you guys near as excited as I am for to see you guys devour that whole thing? Nothing's huge. Now, I am going to cut this up into smaller pieces. I'm not just going to like let them swallow that whole thing. Because you and I know, he and I will swallow that whole oh, thing. Oh, yeah. He will not even chew it. Just inhale it. These are our older ones from, well, they're not even old. These are just our last prep. So yeah, these ones are going on top and these ones are going to go in the bottom of the freezer. But This is last month. Should I show them? You, you want me to show you guys how we set them in there? So we have this side of, this, of the freezer is for us and then the other side is for the dog. If you guys didn't know, Colin shops in bulk at Sam's Club. I do. <laughs> and there's two of us. So. I like, I like mine in bulk. I don't know why. I like mine in bulk. I mean. It's way cooler to buy like a pack of 75 fruit roll ups. <laughs> Nine deodorants six. at a yeah. time, though. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, watch out. What are you doing? I mean, the thing is, is if you buy a bolt, you don't have to buy it every time you go. Yeah, but it's hard to store more food when it's only two of us. You know what I mean? Like, buying in bulk, it's a lot of stuff. And so we have a lot of one thing. I know. This is well, our second got, one. <laughs> Huge fridge and, and another one. <laughs> we Work. we do live in the middle of nowhere too, so. Yeah, you have to, you have to. It's harder that way. So yeah, we pretty much just lay everything in here like this, so that it's easy to pull out. And we do pull out one or a few days at a time, and we just put them in the fridge on a plate or in a platter to let them thaw. We usually just pull out in the morning. No, we don't. Um, do you mind going more into detail on how you train your Roddy's to to allow being petted while eating? Um, yeah, so I, I, I just went over a, like a little bit of, uh, of what we were doing. So it starts, I mean, it's not just feeding. It's toys, it's bones, it's food. I mean, you kind of you kind of got to set guidelines and restrictions for your dogs, and you got to make them very clear to them. Hey. So, when we were first training the dogs to stay away from their food while we prepped it, I physically now Fluffy has cut about 15 pounds from last summer. So I physically would have to I would set the dog bowl down. Stay. Hey, stay. <laughs> So they wouldn't necessarily do that. They would try and get it, okay? So the key and I would try and get it like this. I would hold him back. 
Okay? I would hold them back and I would tell them, stay. Stay. Good boy. And then let go of him. See how he's starting to go after it? I mean, it takes constant training. So he'll start, he'll go after it. Stay. Stay. Okay, get it. He's going to find out there's nothing there. Okay? So then, after he stays a little bit, then you can introduce a treat. You can introduce food. You can introduce a, introduce a toy. However, you've got to show them what it looks like to do the job that you want done. So, the way that I explain it to people is that the dog needs to clearly know exactly what you expect from them. So I get people all the time, they get a, an eight-week-old puppy, and then they message me on Instagram, and they say, my eight-week-old puppy is not listening. I'm like, okay. Go into that a little more. What is he not listening? Well, he's biting me. Okay. Have you shown him what not biting looks like? Yeah, I have. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit about biting. And then we'll talk about sit in, stay, shake. So if I tell Fluffy, come here, Fluff. Come here. Sit. Nope. Sit. Good boy. Okay. He did that because he knows what sitting looks like. So if he didn't know what sitting looks like and I tell him to just sit and he, and he doesn't do that, it doesn't mean he's not listening. It's like if somebody came up to you and started speaking a language that you never heard before. It doesn't mean you're not listening. It means you don't understand. So when Fluffy sits, you praise him. Okay, when Fluffy lays down, you praise him. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Up. Stay. Good boy. Good boy. And you've seen him too not listen. Stay. Go back. Go back. Sit. Sit. Stay. Stay. Good boy. Stay. No. Sit. Hey. Fluff. Sit. Good boy. Shake. Stay. So now after a couple times of being shown what it looks like to stay, Stay. Stay. They've got to constantly be reminded and shown what a good job looks like, what it looks like to stay. Okay, come. Good boy. Good boy. Does that explain a little bit? Does that answer the question a little bit? I think so. It's uh, it's constant. It's constant reminders. Um, and. One thing that uh, I want to say that's kind of like one of my favorite quotes is if you're getting frustrated training them, imagine how frustrated they are not knowing exactly what you want from them. We have two boys and one girl. Fluffy's the youngest, and then Mama Kita, and then Kenai, he's the oldest. Old boy, that's you. Kenai is getting old. Old boy. Hi, Kenai. Fluffy. Fluffy is a thick boy. He's a very thick boy. Are they American, Roddy? Um, you got uh, Fluffy's got some American in him. Kita's got some American in her. Kenai is one hundred percent purebred German. Kenai is a lot smaller. He's the smallest that we have. His face is small. Com like Fluffy's face is huge. A lot of the reason why Kenai is smaller um, is because he was fixed. Kenai was fixed at eight weeks old. Now. If you know anything about fixing dogs, you should wait, especially males, 18 to 24 months. So that's why he is smaller. He didn't have a lot of those growth hormones that uh, your typical testosterone-filled one to two-year-old puppy would have like Fluffy. If you can see the size difference in them. Yeah. Huh. Uh, Kenai's about 90 pounds. Fluffy's 120 pounds. Now, it, it, it's really hard to tell that it is. on camera. But if you get down low to an angle where you can see, Kenai's legs are smaller, uh, his hips are not as wide, his chest is not as low. Fluffy does sit just a little bit shorter than Kenai, but his whole chest and body sits lower. Um, Kenai has a little bit bigger of a rib cage. Fluffy has really just a firm, masculine rib cage and chest. 
but uh, their head size, head size is really different. Um, you know, then you've got the tail, but like you can see. So like Kenai's, Kenai's leg right here at his elbow, I can fit my hand around with extra room. Fluffy's, I can't. Well, of course you all want to come see that. Fluffy's, I'm about that. So I mean, it really tells you the size difference. So Kenai's, I'm about that size. Right at the same spot, right here at the elbow on their front arms. Kenai's, I'm about that size. Fluffy's, I'm about that size. It's, it's just, it's hard to tell on camera. Hard to tell. What do you say? Let me pick you up, let me pick you up. No? He has his bone in his mouth. Fluffy is so funny. We have little tiny, um, well not tiny, but we have little t toys for him and he'll carry around the little leg off of a stuffed animal. Just the leg. And that shows you keen eye size. Not near as big as little Fluffy. Fluffy's about that size. Fluffy's about that size. Fluffy's about that size. Right now, she's probably, <laughs> I don't know. Kenai does this all the time. <laughs> I don't know what this is. You want to wrestle? You want to wrestle with me? Um, we do not train other people's dogs. We just do these YouTube videos. We do these YouTube videos because you guys can train your dogs. Like, how many times do we say all the time? Like, a lot of stuff that we say is common sense. And I don't want that to sound like any rude but like they're not that special like you can take care of a dog like some of these people have like four kids and they're like i could never take care of a dog yeah I'm see like, somebody just said what well, three is too many one's fine three is too many um it is a lot of work it is it's a lot of work but it's a lot of reward i mean yeah. it's three times the love it's three times the fluff it's three times the play it's three times the accidents like i mean it's really high risk, but it's also high reward. And we get to care for some of the best dogs on the planet. Huh, Kenai? Huh? Huh? Um, let's see. How long to train them? It's never ending. It's never ending. Never ending. Come see, like, Kenai responds really well to hand signals, but not so much verbal. Fluffy is good verbally. Hi. Hi. Um. Give me that bone. What are you doing? Give me the bone. I'm trying to see what else. I don't know if we missed anything else. You can get it. I know you got it. Come on. You got it. You got it. Look you how big it. he is. You got it. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Um, and then my white shirt's a little dirty. That's okay. Hello. Hi, baby girl. Hi. Hi. Roddy Channel. Welcome back. Today, we are going to be going over... I think you should host the next video, Kenan. Well, did I leave anything out? Am I boring um. you guys yet? <laughs> this was random. This wasn't planned at all. Yeah, no. 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 How long should I take my dogs for a walk? At least 32, 32 an hour a day, at least. That's just with um, exercise, though, correct? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be a walk. It can be kicking the ball outside. Yep. Yeah. Um, one thing to remember too is like people are like, oh, I need to get my dog exhausted. You cannot just always 100% hardcore exercise your dog. Like you can't just dead wake up, hard play, fetch, run, swim. Like sometimes you just got to go on a walk. Sometimes you just got to go on a little hike. Sometimes you got to go on a car ride. Sometimes you got to play fetch. Like you've got to change up what you're doing. Imagine if you went to the gym every day and you just like walked. Like every day you just walked. Some days you gotta do chest, some days you gotta do arms, some days you gotta do legs, some days you gotta do cardio, some days you gotta have a rest day, some days you gotta play a little harder. Um, I mean, that's really the best way to put it, is they need an all around, overall health plan, an exercise plan that is gonna be consistent, but also changed up a little bit. Um, we do not feed them frozen raw food, it's always thawed. Um, fresh, cut up, bag, and then froze. And then thawed. From here, and then thawed. Yeah, I don't do raw, but I do a whole chicken, and let's see, last me five days in the crock pot. Um, huh? Chicken? It says I don't do raw, but I do a whole chicken in the crock pot. They, I, I've said a, a few other things. Um, last me five days, two feedings a day. I crock pot it, and a beef, 
bone from the Amish market. Try raw. See how it goes. Yeah. Raw works well. It's crazy it how what it though. yeah, it really doesn't. It's crazy how much um Lexi's Oh, somebody I sorry, I totally forgot. Somebody asked about how to get their puppy used to nail clippers. Um same way you're gonna get them used to anything. So say that this right here is nail clippers. Right? Hey, I need one of you to come here. Which one of you? You? Okay, hey, come here. I need you to sit for me. No. <laughs> Kina, you wanna do this one? Somebody? Come here. You wanna do this one? Alright, I need you to sit. Okay, let's say that these are nail clippers. You don't just immediately grab it. Give me your paw. You don't just like start clipping his nails. See how he's like, whoa, what's going on here? We don't do that. So come here, sit. Come here, sit. Come here. We're going to touch it. We're going to touch it. Good boy. Good boy. Give me paw. Give me paw. Good boy. How about these back ones? Good boy. Lay down. 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 Good boy. All right. Come here. Good boy. Good boy. Notice how slow introduction, and then I'm getting it out of the way. See how he's a lot less finicky now about him? So, like, even sometimes now, it's like, they see the nails clippers come out, and they don't love them. I mean, like, who loves hygiene all the time? Sometimes a shower is nice, but sometimes you don't have time for a shower, and you try to avoid it as much as possible. So, see how now? Now I can touch him. He's not even really that bothered. Sometimes people will take nail clippers, they're like, I gotta clip my dog's nails. Immediately start trying to clip them. Their dog hates nail clippers now. Okay? So, good boy. Good boy. Alright, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Give me a paw. Give me a paw. Give me a paw. See how now I can now I can introduce them. See that? Slow introduction to new things. If you guys haven't seen our latest video, Training with Rottweiler, go check that one out. I spent, what, eight hours working on that video? I spent a lot of time working on that video trying to show you guys the tips and tricks. This is not easy. It's hard, hard work because it takes dedication. It takes a lot of time and energy, but it's very simple with consistency. Very simple. I tried raw with my Huskies, but he seemed constantly hungry. Um... Has there been any issues as far as getting the taste for blood? Um, I think it's just trans transition, getting used to, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's all about proper feeding. Uh, like, I mean, if you were to like throw a raw chicken on somebody's lap after your dog's hungry all day, that's not gonna go well. But if you can train them to like be decent, obedient dogs, that's where it starts. Your dogs are not gonna just get bloodthirsty vampires and wanna kill everyone and everything because they had raw food. The same way that I can look at a cow and not go kill a cow because I want a steak. Like, sometimes people go off on like these tangents and they're like, oh, well, my neighbor down the street has a Rottweiler and he eats raw chicken and he attacked a cow down the road. So, because he eats raw chicken, the cow's life is in danger because he's bloodthirsty. Like sometimes people's brains really work like that. Like if you wreck your car, it doesn't have anything to do with the bowl of cereal that you ate in the morning. But some people will be like, well, you shouldn't have ate that bowl of cereal that morning. Maybe you wouldn't have wrecked your car. Like sometimes things just don't go together, but people will get this idea like, oh, their dog was vicious. It's because they raw fed it. No, their dog is vicious because they're a terrible owner. They didn't take the time to train their dog, and their dog attacked somebody, and now you're blaming the dog instead of the owner. Does that make sense? Um, which of the dogs is most affectionate? Um, I would say either. Yeah, Kina is the most, like, he's the best around strangers and everything. But Fluffy is, a, he's literally a toddler. He's in everything. He's all over the place. Not only that, um, Kina is a rescue dog. So he has a little bit more background about what it's like to not have loving family, what it's like to not have a people be there for him, what it's like to not be in a loving home. Fluffy, man, Fluffy, you don't know the difference of what, you don't know what a bad home is like. 
Like last summer, this dude is running away all the time. Oh yeah, Fluffy. <laughs> we both work at least a half hour from home and he would take off. <laughs> he, would, he would dig under the fence, we fix the fence, we fix the ground. He'd break through the fence. There was like a time where he just really, really didn't care. And Kenai would follow. <laughs> and Kenai would follow. Now Kenai, if he's not with Fluffy, he's, he's fine. The yard all yeah. Day. Same with Mama. Kena, She's good. Kena never left the yard one time. She I knows could, how good she I has it. Leave the gate open and she would never leave. Fluffy, on the other hand, he don't know how good he actually has it here, so he'll try and run away. Kenai, though, if you're home, he's got to be in your lap. Fluffy could be off chewing a bone. Kita couldn't care less. She wants her space. She wants her time. There is times where she's very affectionate. But Kenai, like, 100%, 24-7, all the time, wants attention. Is that fair? Yeah. I do this. Yeah, Kenai is the most lovey-dovey. Mama, she's most standoffish, but when she gets used to you, she's just so pure. If I were to be afraid of any of them, if I was a dog, I'd be afraid of Kenai. If I was a human, I'd be afraid of Kita. Yeah. Fluffy, though. Who was it came over to the house the other day without... We knew they were coming. Oh. We knew they were coming over. And so my office is upstairs. And we were both upstairs. And somebody came in the house. And they came over to the gate. They opened the gate. He bit him, right? Yeah. Well, he put his hand over the gate or something. Yeah, he put his hand over the gate. Either to open it or something. He bit him. I'm like, don't put your hand over the gate. Like, first off, don't come in my house without me. Second off... Don't put your hand over the gate or over the fence. So, like, if there's a fence right here, and you see a Rottweiler, don't just walk over there and put your hand over the fence. Walk over there, let them get used to you. Odds are, they they know that that fence is their territory and boundary line, and if you cross it, it's free game to them. We had, um, Fluffy got somebody, Fluffy got someone that came over, they put their hand over the gate, Fluffy bit them. Um... If you keep your hand on your side of the gate, or if the gate's open, you're good. If you come in the house without permission, and you try and just like play it off like you're supposed to be there, they know. And they Would she do that them. to people she knows too? Me and Colin, no. Me and Sam, no. Um, people who they know are not supposed to be here in the house, yes. Or even outside? Yeah, or even outside. Um... What, uh, we give our rot puppy dry food still at six months. At what age do you recommend start giving adult food? Uh, adult food, I'm going to say about nine months. Nine months for a Rottweiler. Nine to 12. Nine to 12 is a good time to transition. That puppy food, you know, what you can do is you can 50-50 it. So, say eight to 12 months, you can do half puppy food and half adult food. The thing is... That puppy food is packed with, so there's different types of proteins and fats that your dogs need. And if you, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? If you take it away from them, if you cut them short on some of those proteins and fats that they need as a puppy, then they're more likely going to have uh, joint problems or bone or health issues because they didn't get, uh, they didn't get the, oh man, what's the, I can't think of the word. It, you know what I'm, they didn't, they're lacking in certain areas of things that they need. Calcium, protein A, protein Bs, crude fats, uh, lean fats, things like that. So, um, vitamins, you know, vitamins are huge. Oils, uh, essential oils that they need. But, yeah. Okay. What else we got? That's it? Um, I think we've been on for 50 minutes, and so I think we're good. We've been on for 50 minutes. Okay. Um couple quick real things a uh, couple things real quick don't forget to check out the merch line if you haven't Roddy channel we got hats and beanies we'll ship anywhere in the United States right now um, we'll ship anywhere as long as shipping costs are covered uh, we can't afford to take a, really a hit on the stuff but we're just trying to get some merch out there uh, really more to come to more to come we've got crew necks we've got sweaters we've got beanies we've got hats we've got koozies coming we've got lanyards coming we got we even talked about some mouse pads we even talked about like some uh, um, some dog mats, like where you keep your bowls and stuff, and have like the Roddy Channel things like that. Um, I, do we have any other updates? No other updates. Um. Fluffy's toe from the camping trip is doing really well. It's not infected. Um, it is bothering him still a little bit, but you know, like if you rip a nail off, I mean, it's no it's no little thing. There's a bunch of nerves in there. 
but he's doing really well. We did give him on a couple of antibiotics on some amoxicillin. Uh, Kida, she's doing really well. Her cruciate ligament, um, it was hurting her the other day. She slipped on some ice. She slipped on some ice and her leg was hurting. She didn't walk around for the day. Yeah. Um, other than that, she's doing really well. She, she bounced back from that. Uh, Kenai is doing overall really, really well. He, can, he knows we're talking about him. His tail's starting to move just a little bit. But uh, Now they're all tired. I think that meal wore him out. Now we're going to uh, go get ready for bed. <laughs> I actually have a little bit more work to do on the computer. Um, I don't know what Sam's doing, but... Uh, um for the raw meals we do have videos on them you can see all the ingredients and what we do there or rewind this video and you can see what we do how much do you feed uh like per weight tell them real quick so you can do it by weight um you, you can fill the dogs out you can i mean really once you start feeding it yeah it depends on the dog's weight but it also depends on what other stuff they're intaking it depends on the exercise plan uh there's really just a lot of things that tie into it so do your research on it, reach out, ask questions, comment your questions down below, and make sure that you're following the scale. You need, you need organs, you need proteins, you need multiple sources of proteins, um, you need eggs in there, you need bones in there, you need vegetables in there, we do fruits. Just, just make sure that you're not, oh man, I can't think of that word, uh, depriving. Make sure you're not depriving these beautiful animals of things that they need if you're going to do the wrong food. But uh, And make sure it's not toxic for them. Yeah, make sure it's not toxic. Organic is great. Uh, make sure that before you put stuff in that raw food, you just Google it. Hey, is this safe for my dogs? Like onions or not? Um, grapes or <clears throat> not? Raisins or not? Just, you know, just to name a few. But like pineapple, strawberries, uh, blueberries. Yes, we did sweet potatoes on our last ones. Um, we do sweet rice. Beef. That's good on a bad stomach. Rice is Quinoa. Good. It's good with chicken, oatmeal. For, you know, upset stomach, gassy stomach. It's good to balance out the stomach. So, yeah, just tons of, tons of things there. Go back on the channel. Watch some of the older videos. Uh, if, if you guys have missed any of those, we do really have a lot of great content. So, don't forget to check it out, but I really think that's it. It's, it's a little late on a Saturday or Sunday night. We've been working all week, and we're going to be right back at it in the morning. So what do you say that we uh, wrap up tonight's video, and we will catch you guys later on this week. And we hope that all of you guys just have a wonderful week, and thank you again for supporting the Roddy channel. Have a great night, everybody, and we'll see you on the next one. Okay, I don't know how to end it, though, so you're going to have to do that. <laughs> all right, say goodbye, Kenai. Say